Welcome to Fanfiction Audiobook, Fairy Tale's Strongest Ghost Sword. Chapter 36. During this period of experience, Yunfei suddenly discovered a very serious problem, that is, Yunfei found that he seemed unable to learn skills with magical attacks such as Ghost Slash, Split Wave Slash, and Wave Sword. Neither can learn. Because Yunfei has learned almost all the basic skills, and there is no magic attack similar to Ghost Slash, so Yunfei began to speculate whether all the skills in the future will only have magic attacks I can't learn by myself. Yunfei is very suspicious. The reason why he can't master magic attack skills is entirely because he doesn't have the slightest aptitude to learn magic. Yunfei still has a very clear memory of how his predecessor kneeled, isn't it just because I am a magic waste material, so I can't learn magic at all? So Yunfei related the fact that he is a magic waste wood to this. In fact, besides this, Yunfei really couldn't think of any other reason why he couldn't learn the ghost swordsman's skills with magic attacks. After all, the pure explosive skill of ghost slash is still very useful. Before learning the skill of drawing a sword, the destructive power of ghost slash can definitely be called a small sword slash. At least Yunfei remembers that when he was playing Dungeons and Warriors on Earth before crossing, he still had a fresh memory of the high-intensity burst skills that Ghost Swordsman possessed from birth. Who exists, otherwise Yunfei wouldn't regret not being able to learn Ghost Slashing. In fact, there is another more important reason, that is, Yunfei remembered that when he was playing Dungeon and Warriors before he traveled, the so-called small colorless crystals were needed to release those big moves. Yunfei didn't know that in this fairy tale world do you need to consume such things as small colorless crystal blocks to release skills such as drawing swords and chopping in the game. If it is really needed, Yunfei really doesn't know where to get the legendary small colorless crystal. Not counting, Yunfei felt that his entire year of life would not be worth as much as a few small colorless crystals. Now Yunfei has almost mastered the basic skills, and has already started to practice the first colorless skill which is the first big move, which is the first big move. It is indeed time to consider the prerequisites for releasing the big move. The matter of the crystal block, otherwise, if Yunfei has learned how to draw the sword but does not have the colorless small crystal block to release the sword, it will be really bad. But soon Yunfei felt that maybe he didn't need to worry about this problem in a short time, because when Yunfei started to practice the sword drawing skill and tried to activate the sword drawing skill as soon as possible, he knew that this time was really not enough for a short time. Too likely mastered. For example, for example, what kind of basic skills Yunfei has practiced since he crossed over until now, all of which require Yunfei to strike with his own strength as many times as possible. It seems quite difficult to strike with all his strength. It's quite difficult to deal with, but in the final analysis, a full blow is just a power that Yunfei himself possesses. No matter it is a baby or a strong man, they can swing their own full blow, so to some extent, a full blow is actually a relatively easy thing to achieve, but the condition for opening the sword is to use with 110% strength, he swung the knife 4000 times. All go, isn't it, 110% power. After Yunfei noticed the activation condition of drawing the sword in his eyes, he said with a face of disbelief, let alone 110% power, even 101% or even 100% 101.1 is the power to break the limit, which is not at the same level as a full blow. As long as he exerts the power beyond his own, Yunfei's body will be damaged to a certain extent, and it will definitely not be serious. Not to mention this alone, it is destined that Yunfei will not be able to master the skill of drawing a knife so quickly. However, when Yunfei thought that he severely injured Alfred the Thunder Dragon with two slashes last time, Yunfei suddenly woke up. If it can be obtained, Yunfei will doubt whether the power of drawing a sword is reliable. By the way, during the period of Yunfei's experience, Yunfei's reputation has spread completely. In addition to Yunfei being the first human to cause serious damage to the Dragon Clan in human history, Yunfei also beheaded many times Devil's relationship. Yunfei often encounters demons that cause trouble everywhere in the process of practicing everywhere, and all of them are killed by Yunfei one by one. This is why Yunfei's reputation can spread throughout the entire Ishgar continent. Of course, except for the very powerful Sila that Yunfei met for the first time, the other demons were a bit unsatisfactory, more like the work of Zeref's practice, 
and were basically killed by Yunfei with a relatively easy attitude, and afterwards, Yunfei never met the weaker demon that he beheaded. Yunfei speculates that it may be because the demons he killed were relatively weak, so they were not revived by consuming resources. After all, resurrecting people also needs to pay a considerable price. In this way, Yunfei's reputation spread among the horrific-looking demons who kept beheading one after another, and Yunfei was even crowned the title of the strongest human being by troublemakers. But Yunfei really likes this title. And when Yunfei was sitting on an unknown tree thinking casually, a very familiar voice came from behind him, the voice of Zirf. Long time no see, brother Yunfei. Hearing this familiar voice with a trace of unfamiliar voice, Yunfei instantly stood up from the tree, turned around in surprise and looked at Zirf who appeared behind him at some point. Zirf, when did you come behind me? Yunfei looked at Zirf and asked in a little surprise, how Zan was not scared to death by Zirf who suddenly appeared behind him. Yunfei didn't expect that Zirf has become such a powerful existence. Thinking of this, Yunfei just looked at Zirf a little bit. Although Zerif's strength has undergone earth-shaking changes, Zirf still hasn't changed much in appearance. At most, he has grown a lot taller after being separated from Yunfei for three years, and his expression is much colder than before three years ago, just like a three-no man. As for the other things, it's still the same as Zirf three years ago, black hair and gray eyes, boats and black clothes and white long cloth, everything is the same as Zirf three years ago, it's just that Zerif's eyes became a little more lifeless, and even revealed a little indifference of ignoring life. It can be seen that in just three years, Zirf has really experienced many things. I just came behind you, brother Yunfei, and I happened to be nearby. I saw you sitting here, brother Yunfei, so I came over to say hello to Yunfei. Zirf smiled when he heard Yunfei's doubts, and turned to Yunfei explained. Yunfei went to practice in some rare places all day long, and Zirf also searched for places where he could see no one, preferably even life, so it is not a big deal that two people with exactly the same destination can meet together to a certain extent possible things. It turned out to be like this, let's not talk about it, Zirf, I have a very serious question to ask you, why did you create a demon? Yunfei nodded suddenly, sighed secretly, it was really a coincidence, but soon Yunfei's expression became serious, it was fine if he hadn't met Zirf before, now that he met now, then Yunfei needs to ask carefully ask Zirf why he wants to create things out of the devil. It's okay to create demons, but the most incomprehensible thing for Yunfei is that Zirf actually created the demons and left them alone, allowing the demons to wreak havoc in the outside world. Yunfei really wants to know what Zirf thinks. When I first met Zirf, I never saw through the thoughts in Zerif's mind. It's just that Zirf didn't answer Yunfei's question directly, but instead talked about all irrelevant things on his own. Brother Yunfei, do you still remember what you told me last time about the curse of God Anxel Ramel, the death hunt? Zirf looked at Yunfei and smiled wryly, and said helplessly to Yunfei. N, I know, what's the matter? Yunfei was taken aback after hearing Zerif's words, and then asked a little strangely, Yunfei didn't quite understand why Zerif suddenly mentioned this matter. Of course, soon Yunfei knew what Zerif was talking about. The matter started from the time when Yunfei just traveled here from the earth for more than a year. At that time, Natsu had been dead for a while. At that time, because I knew what Zerif would dare to see for a long time, I found out that Zerif wanted to study about the R system and the Eclipse Gate. To be honest, Yunfei still hesitated for a while at that time. After all, what if Yunfei told Zirf the effect of the contradictory curse of death hunting, and then Zirf did not study the R system and the Eclipse Gate? Forget about the R system, Yunfei has no interest in the R system at all, but if Zirf doesn't study the Eclipse Gate, then Yunfei will cry to death, Yunfei doesn't want to just wait for 400 for many years. Even if Yunfei's lifespan has reached more than 160 years after a lot of training and practicing skills, even if Yunfei can live for more than 400 years with such a step-by-step -step increase in lifespan, God knows that Yunfei has experienced more than 400 years. Have you seen through the world of mortals? Just because Yunfei has traveled through the past six years, Yunfei feels like a completely different person, completely different from himself who was an otaku before the time travel. However, the final result made Yunfei breathe a sigh of relief. Even though Yunfei told Zirf the series of consequences brought about by the death hunt, 
Zirf still did not give up the idea of resurrecting his younger brother Natsu. The matter seemed to Yunfei at the time in the good direction, everything has not changed from the original, and Zirf is also psychologically prepared for his future end. I have been thinking that the kinder the person in the death hunt is, the more he cherishes life, the more powerful he is, and vice versa, so I try to be a person who ignores life. The devil is what I made to achieve indifference to life. At the same time, I was trying to create a powerful demon to kill myself. Zirf explained to Yunfei, with a chill in his luck. Although Yunfei didn't do anything to Zirf, it can be seen that Zirf has been led astray by Yunfei without knowing it. Zirf is still the kind Zirf, but he has become more decisive or indifferent. Yunfei looked at Zirf in disbelief. He didn't expect Zirf to become like this. The most important thing is that it was because of Yunfei himself that Zirf became like this. Yunfei was really speechless. Ha ha ha, Yuan, so it looks like this. That's right. Zirf, since you can create demons, when are you going to revive Natsu? Yunfei quickly laughed dryly twice, and then quickly changed the subject and asked Zirf. In fact, Yunfei has seen too many bloody scenes in the past few years. As the saying goes, good habits come naturally. Maybe when Yunfei first met Sila, he would be very angry when he saw the scene at that time, and even lost his mind. Now Yunfei would definitely be very calm if he didn't, and cut Sila to vent his anger. Yunfei doesn't like women who are only romance and beautiful, and even Yunfei is quite afraid of such women. All in all, what Yunfei wants to express is that Yunfei can face scenes or things that Yunfei could not accept before with a very normal attitude. Therefore, compared to Zirf randomly creating a large number of rubbish demons and not caring about them, Yunfei has to talk to Zirf about when to revive Natsu. After all, as long as Natsu appears, it also means the arrival of the Dragon King Festival. And there is no way around it, who told Zirf that he would create a large number of demons and ignore them, so there is a certain connection with Yunfei. If Yunfei hadn't prepared Zirf mentally to face some problems that he might not be able to accept more objectively, perhaps Zirf might still be an ostrich hiding in the deep mountains and old forests and dare not show his face to others. Sometimes a sane person is really scary. If you have to use an analogy, then use the character in a novel that Yunfei lived on Earth before crossing over. This character left a deep impression on Yunfei a deep to the extreme image. That is Senior Colonel Chu Xuanchu in The Infinite Terror. Does it make you break out in a cold sweat just thinking about the feeling of facing Senior Colonel Chu Xuanchu? Now Yunfei feels that Zirf has a bit of Colonel Chu Zan Chu's temperament, and the feeling of suppressing IQ is really quite uncomfortable. Come on, I'm a disaster for this world, I shouldn't exist in this world, Sanatsu is the strongest demon I will create, who has the power to live while killing me. Listen after Yunfei's words, Zirf said seriously. In Zerif's plan, using the R system to revive Natsu is something that can be done at any time, but Zirf does not plan to simply resurrect Natsu, if it is simply to resurrect Natsu, then the resurrected Natsu will not have any power is still the kind of existence that can be slaughtered at any time, and may die at any time. This is not what Zirf wants. Zirf has paid such a heavy price for the resurrection of his younger brother Natsu. Wouldn't it be too bad to just resurrect a Natsu who has no power at all? So Zirf is going to do his best to give his younger brother Natsu the most power possible, and give his younger brother Natsu the power to defeat and kill himself even beyond himself. Okay. Okay, Zirf, let's meet once, don't make such a serious expression, after we parted from the Mildian Academy of Magic, where have you been, Zirf? Seeing that the topic and the atmosphere became so heavy unconsciously, Yunfei quickly tried to change the topic to make the atmosphere a little bit more cheerful. It was obviously the first meeting with Zirf after so long. It's too embarrassing if it's heavy. It's just that Yunfei may be a person who is not very good at chatting. Whether it's the question about Natsu just now or the current question, it seems that Zeref's scar was torn off instantly without any pause. After all, he is a fool I also know that Zeref's recent life is definitely not going to be good. Obviously possessing invincible power, but to avoid the whole world, this is really a very scary thing. As a result, the atmosphere between Yunfei and Zeref became completely frozen and became more depressing. It can be seen that Yunfei's successive questions made Zirf recall some bad things. Yunfei also found that he seemed to ask an inappropriate question again, 
and laughed a few times, Yunfei didn't know what to talk about with Zirf. In fact, even in the part where Natsu didn't die time, although Zirf is very polite and courteous to himself, but Yunfei has always been less interested in Zirf, a monster with a high IQ who can suppress his own IQ, so even before, Yunfei had nothing to talk to Zirf. Brother Yunfei, you don't have to do this. In fact, I am really grateful to you, Brother Yunfei. If it wasn't for Brother Yunfei, you told me in advance that I would be cursed by the god Anxel Ramel and hunted by death, so that I would have been mentally prepared in advance, maybe now I really have collapsed. Zirf smiled at Yunfei's mouth and didn't know what to say, and then said a little bit melancholy. In fact, even if Zirf is already mentally prepared and even avoids places where humans live as much as possible, Zirf is still on the verge of collapse. Otherwise, Zirf would not let the demons he created leave alone. On the one hand, Zirf was tormented by guilt because he unintentionally took a large number of lives. On the other hand, Zirf was very disgusted because he got immortality and had unlimited time to study magic and rush to satisfy himself. I have been wandering in the maze of thought. Being mentally prepared does not mean that Zirf really doesn't care about it. As the saying goes, a good country is easy to change and one's nature is hard to change. This sentence is not only for those bad guys, but also for those good guys. Zirf, who is kind, gentle, and cherishes life, is placed here, and no one can change it, otherwise, God Anxel Ramel would not have cast such a curse on Zirf. Even if the calculation is accurate, Zirf will be tortured infinitely because of gaining eternal life, otherwise, if it is replaced by a heartless person, wouldn't it be too cheap for the other party? You must know that this curse can bring eternal life. But having said that, there is a reason why Zirf came to Yunfei after meeting Yunfei. The last time Zirf told Yunfei before parting at Mildian Academy of Magic in Denner City, it can be seen that Yunfei is very interested in the solar eclipse gate that can travel through time, so Zirf is going to research the solar eclipse gate I will inform Yunfei later to see if there is any place where Yunfei wants to use the eclipse gate, and I can lend it to Yunfei. Now that the R system that Zirf pays most attention to has been researched and manufactured, the next step is naturally to research and manufacture the Eclipse Gate, not only for himself, but also for Zirf who promises something. It's like throwing out water, it can't be taken back. Since Zirf has promised what he promised, Zirf will definitely do it, so Zirf will come to find Yunfei directly after meeting Yunfei by chance. Under normal circumstances, as long as Zirf meets humans or animals, he will definitely just turn around and leave, the farther away the better. As for why not give it to Yunfei, in fact Zirf doesn't care about this kind of thing, after all Zirf is a person who wants to seek death other than resurrecting his younger brother Natsu, what about the R system or the Eclipse Gate, actually don't care at all. It's just that the Eclipse Gate is too huge and not suitable for carrying around, so Zirf didn't plan to give Yunfei the Eclipse Gate, after all, it's not convenient to take it away even if it is, and Zirf is also needed the place of the Eclipse Gate. By the way, I have made considerable progress in the research on the Solar Eclipse Gate. I know that brother Yunfei really wants the Solar Eclipse Gate, so I left a space mark on you, Yunfei brother. Wait for me to put the Eclipse Gate will come to you when it is made. Zirf tried to relax his expression as much as possible, and then smiled at Yunfei. Zerif's smile who has been living alone all the time, looks a little weird, stiff and forced. Kindness. Yunfei was taken aback when he heard Zerif's words, and then became surprised. He didn't expect that Zerif had reached this level, and the gate of the eclipse was almost finished, so it meant that the time away from the Dragon King Festival was getting closer and closer, near. How dangerous is the Dragon King Festival? Yunfei really doesn't know about this question, whether it was when he stayed at home before time travel, or after time travel to the era when the fairy tale dragon clan ruled the world 400 years ago, Yunfei only knows that the Dragon King festival is very, very dangerous, you must know the vast majority of dragons in the dragon clan don't like humans very much, and the dragons that are close to humans are only a very small part after all. You know, in this era when the dragon clan ruled the world 400 years ago, only dragons could kill dragons, so at the beginning of the Dragon King sacrifice, every one of the dragon clan is still very serious in their actions, and they will never be heavy or heavy. Death, at most, is nothing more than a serious injury. At the same time, at this time, 
there is a very serious question that needs to be considered. There are far fewer dragons who are close to humans than those who are not. A dragon must not be a particularly serious problem. The strong hold the strong, and the weak hold the weak. In this way, when the dragons who are close to humans are dragged down, there are still a large number of people who are not close to humans who have no opponents, and everyone is a dragon. What will happen to the human race? Under such circumstances, human beings will never end well. There is no need to guess. The human beings who are the root cause of the dragon clan's infighting will definitely kill those dragons who are not close to human beings. At this time, no one can stop this carnage. All in all, once the Dragon King Festival really comes, the middle and late stages are fine, but the early stage is definitely the most dangerous moment for human beings, and Yunfei is going to run away with the Eclipse Gate at that time. Regarding this kind of thing beyond his ability, Yunfei can only express his helplessness. A good man is afraid that a tiger will not be able to hold back a pack of wolves. Even if Yunfei can kill a dragon or two, it will not help. He was the first human being to kill the dragon clan and was besieged by the dragon clan. Anyway, when it comes to the dragon king festival, it is right to use the eclipse gate to run away. This is the choice of the wise. Of course, if all the running equipment is properly prepared, Yunfei would not mind killing a few dragons openly before running away if there is a chance. No, just kill a few lizards. Afterwards, things became simpler all of a sudden because Yunfei and Zirf really couldn't fart a few farts, so there was nothing to talk about, so after setting the space coordinates on Yunfei, Zirf left without saying anything yes, Yunfei naturally shrugged indifferently, what to do or what to do. However, Yunfei is not as carefree as he imagined. Yunfei is also quite brain-burning about how to quickly practice the skill of drawing swords and slashing. If he continues to progress at the current slow speed, Yunfei feels that he will definitely be punished when he arrives at the Dragon King Festival. The existence of the Dragon Clan hanging and beating. But this kind of thing can't be done quickly if you want to, and Yunfei's 110% strength can't be released casually, even though Yunfei is still very strong after several years of experience and exercise. To a certain extent, it is more casual to play a full blow, but if you swing too much with a full blow, you will get a muscle strain. Even the body's full strength blow is not fully adapted, and Yunfei still wants to swing a blow with 110% strength, which is sure to cause severe muscle strain. So even though Yunfei has been able to practice drawing a knife for a long time, the day when he can use the skill of drawing a knife is still so far away. Anyway, Yunfei, as a dick player who never pays for playing games and only relies on cheats to beat all local tyrants and gods, is going to use his brain a little bit. After playing games for so many years before time travel, Yunfei understood a very simple and easy to understand truth, that is, at some point, you can't get into a dead end. It's not necessarily good to obey the rules of the game, and it's not necessarily suitable for you. You know, it was an era when materialism was all about money, and as a dick player who didn't spend any money on money, Yunfei had only one way to play the game happily and beat all kinds of local tyrants, cheat. That's right, that's it. This is the winning rule for Yunfei as a dick player before time travel. Whether it's Crossfire or Dungeon and Fighter, whether it's Warcraft or League of Legends, Yunfei will try his best to break the rules of the game and enjoy the pleasure of playing everything if he's not happy with the game. Of course, the League of Legends game is more rigorous. As a game that does not rely on local tyrants but local turtles, Yunfei found an opportunity to play CD free healing for a day. The author has played it before, and the memory of this cheat is still fresh all the time. It's so cool, that is, the account has been permanently blocked. All in all, what Yunfei wants to express is that you can't continue to practice skills in a regular manner like now. Just starting from a small big move like drawing a knife and chopping, you need to exercise beyond the limit to be able to activate the skill. Yunfei knows, if you don't think of strange tricks and tricks, I don't think there are dozens or hundreds of years, so don't even think about being completely awesome. Yunfei's entire life on Earth plus the six years after time travel is still close to turning 30. Anyone can wait for tens or hundreds of years, but Yunfei can't afford to wait, and doesn't want to wait. After seeing Zirf and knowing that the progress of the Eclipse Gate is almost done, Yunfei also put out the idea of continuing to practice on the Ishgar continent. 
Anyway, in three years, Yunfei also visited most places in the Ishgar continent. After that, Yunfei has almost consumed the novelty of the era 400 years ago in the past six years, and there is no place in particular he wants to go, and Yunfei himself is very familiar with the world of fairy tale 400 years ago. Not particularly cold. So after careful consideration, Yunfei decided to build a log cabin with local materials near the grove where he met Zirf, and lived in it. He is going to enjoy the leisure time, and the world will be chaotic soon. Yes, the Dragon King Festival is more terrifying and bloody than anyone imagined. What kind of situation happened to make the dragons who are close to humans teach humans the magic that can kill dragons regardless of the interests of the dragon clan? You know, people who are close to humans are also dragons. Just like humans teach ants how to kill people, which in itself is an anti-human behavior. There is no second possibility that this situation can occur, that is, in the early days of the outbreak of the Dragon Civil War at the Dragon King's Festival, human beings, as the fuse of the Dragon Civil War, definitely suffered catastrophe, even to the extent of genocide. Only in this way can the dragon who is close to human beings be able to teach humans the magic of killing dragons. Even though Yunfei seems to be very powerful now, he has the title of the strongest human being and has killed countless demons when encountering demons, and he has the record of severely injuring Alfred the Thunder Dragon. But don't forget, the premise of all this is in a one-on-one -on -one duel situation. If Yunfei is besieged by most of the dragons, if he doesn't spend 50 years of his life to borrow the power of God, then he won't even think about running run, this is the general trend. Yunfei remembers that in the chapter of Damo Do Yanwu, the world of Lucy in the future was attacked by a total of 10,000 dragons, which means that there are at least 10,000 dragons that are not close to humans. It would be even more terrifying if there were people who were close to humans. Without the power of gods, even the future black dragon Acknologia would have to kneel. It is estimated that only Zirf, who was cursed by the god Anxel Ramel, can survive, but it is definitely a group of hangers, after all, Zirf cannot defeat the black dragon Acknologia. So what Yunfei can do is to master more ghost swordsman skills as soon as possible, and give some limited support during the Dragon King festival as much as possible. I swung the knife 4000 times with 110% strength, and every time I suffered severe or even slightly severe muscle strain. Yunfei sat alone in the wooden house and meditated, his brows slightly frowned. He muttered to himself a little bit puzzled. At the same time, if you look carefully, the muscles on the right arm and palm of Yunfei's knife swing are being touched from time to time. This is a slight serious muscle strain. Just now Yunfei swung the knife with 110% strength. The side effects brought about. If you use the power to break through the limit, it will cause serious backlash to your body, and this is the price. In fact, the use of strength that breaks through the limit is just a backlash to the muscles, which is definitely the lightest of all backlashes in the body. After all, it is just a muscle strain, and it will be fine in a few days. However, if you use a force that greatly exceeds your own limit strength, then it is very likely to cause serious damage to the muscles, bones, blood vessels, and even internal organs. At that time, it is just a matter of a day or two of self-cultivation. Fortunately, if you don't receive treatment in time, even your life will be lost. Etc. Thinking of this, Yunfei instantly felt as if he had thought of something extraordinary, that is, treatment. Why did I think of such a method? It's not too sharp to treat myself with healing magic for a small injury like a pulled muscle. Yunfei's index finger that was knocking on the wooden table came to a sudden stop, murmured happily. Yunfei thought that he might have found a cheat about gold finger. Since the muscles and body will be injured, it only needs to be healed with magic. Isn't this kind of minor injury can be fixed in minutes? It's just a muscle strain injury. It may be broken if you rely on your own recovery power alone, and your body will be a little slow, but if you use external force, it won't be long before it can be repaired. Is it equivalent to opening a plug-in for gaining experience? Yunfei is a little excited when he thinks of the future of gaining experience by himself, no, the flying appearance of practicing skills. Colleague, Yunfei also slapped himself on the head a few times vigorously. If he could have thought of this method earlier, the drawing of the knife and cutting must have already started, let alone drawing the knife and cutting, 
Even if it is an even more awesome phantom it is not impossible to activate the sword dance or other big moves. It's a pity that the idea is very good, but the reality is much crueler than what Yunfei imagined, because after Yunfei planned the beautiful future, he realized that he seemed to be a magic waste, and even magic could not be used in fact, in this case, a lot of training to end the power of magic seems to be empty talk. Of course, nothing is absolute. Yunfei's inability to use magic does not mean that others cannot use magic. The vast majority, but magicians are the mainstream of the times, even if they are relatively small compared to the huge base of ordinary people, they are still not much less. Otherwise, human beings would have no way to become the most powerful clan other than the Dragon Clan in the era when the Dragon Clan ruled the world 400 years ago. There is no other way. If you can't use magic, you need to move. I don't know if Zirf will come to find me in a place where humans are dense. After thinking that he had no way to use magic, Yunfei shook his head a little helplessly. Finally, he thought of a way to speed up the speed of his gold finger skill. How could Yunfei give up so easily? No matter what, Yunfei is going to find a larger human city to live in first, and hire a magician who can heal magic to cast healing magic on his arm that has been strained due to excessive exercise every day. If the healing magic is activated for Yunfei if the skills have a boosting effect, then Yunfei plans to settle down in the human city. The only thing that is a little worrying is that Yunfei is a little worried whether Zirf will come to the human city to look for him. After all, Zirf will always avoid places with crowds as much as possible. If Zirf sees Yunfei in the human city with if you don't come in and look for it, then Yunfei will be a little troubled. After all, the matter of the Eclipse Gate is more important. However, Yunfei thinks that Zirf is such a genius and so evil, and he can research the R system and the Eclipse Gate. It should be a simple thing to inform himself. In addition, it is really urgent to accelerate the activation of skills, so in the end after careful consideration, Yunfei decided to live in a city with more people. If healing magic doesn't work for muscle strain or practicing skills to activate skills, then Yunfei will come back and live in seclusion in the mountains. Do whatever comes to mind, and after deciding where to go for the next period of time, Yunfei didn't bother to bring anything, and just rushed to the nearest city with a sword. By the way, now that Yunfei has strength and ability, he can get it at any time. Dabi lost his money, so Yunfei was going to exchange himself for a sharper sword. Old man, it's really hard work for you. Looking at the Taidao in his hand, Yunfei felt quite a bit of emotion in his heart. Before he knew it, the Taidao that Yunfei had just crossed over and spent more than four months' salary had been with him for more than five years. It's time, and Uncle Caleb probably wouldn't have imagined that this sword, which Uncle Caleb jokingly called a toy, had drank all kinds of blood in the past five years. Whether it is dragon or demon, whether it is human or monster, this sword that doesn't even have a magic circle has killed countless people. Of course, this is to exclude the dragon race. Yunfei has only slashed the dragon Alfred the Brontosaurus since he crossed over until now. The entire Ishgar continent is so big, and the number of dragon races is so small, even if Yunfei encounters a dragon by chance, Yunfei will not go up to kill the dragon desperately, and the dragon generally doesn't bother to pay attention to, ants, like Yunfei. If Thunder Dragon Alfred hadn't been too bullying back then, Yunfei would never have fought with Thunder Dragon Alfred, and would have secretly dragged Uncle Caleb away. After all, in the final analysis, who the hell would wantonly squander his limited lifespan, whose number is clearly visible, would really feel a pain in his bones, okay. After that, things became easier. Of course, Yunfei rushed all the way to the nearest city, and the target was of course a magician who could perform healing magic. In fact, Yunfei didn't spend too much time at all and quickly rushed to a human city closest to Yunfei. After all, Yunfei's body was updated synchronously with the gold finger skill. How powerful the skill is, it represents Yunfei's body. How powerful. The body has become stronger, and of course the driving is smooth like a duck to water. As soon as he entered the city, Yunfei quickly came to a treatment institution similar to a small medical clinic in the city. Generally speaking, magicians who can heal magic will work here to earn money, but generally there will be no one just ask a magician from the healing department, but magicians are very expensive. Muscle strain. Sir, please forgive me. 
If it's just a muscle strain, I personally suggest that you should heal yourself, sir. It will be very expensive for us to do so. The healing magician looked at Yunfei's muscle strain. Injured arm, just said with a strange face. This magician who uses healing magic is really the first time to see a wounded person who came to him just because of a small muscle strain, even if it is not an injury at all, it is just a muscle strain that's all, even if it's only two days, you'll get better on your own. The last and most important point is that because Yunfei often spends his life outside, he doesn't actually dress himself up very much, so no matter how you look at Yunfei, he doesn't look like he is rich. If Yunfei can't pay, this use cure the magical magician is really not in the mood to talk nonsense with Yunfei here. You don't need to worry about this, you just need to know that I can definitely afford the money. By the way, how do you charge here? Yunfei laughed when he heard the magician in charge of healing magic, said. Other Yunfei may not dare to make any guarantees, but only in terms of money, Yunfei is quite confident. You know, Warcraft can have a lot of valuable materials and so on, and these things are recycled at high prices by various people in need, and Yunfei spends all day practicing outside, either killing demons or monsters, and occasionally killing some human villains, so Yunfei often the materials before being able to get meaning from monsters are sold in human cities, and Yunfei can always get some inheritance from those unsightly bandits and robbers, so Yunfei is really not short of money. Up. Surely you can afford the money. Sir, then I will cure you with magic, but there is one thing I need to remind you, that is, if the husband has no money by then, then we are not here to let you play tricks where to play, my name is Owen Bell, and I am very happy to serve you. The magician, that is, Owen, didn't bother to say anything after seeing Yunfei's sloppy look. Since Yunfei wants a lot of money to let him use magic to heal some muscle strain, then let him do it. Well, anyway, for Owen, there is no problem as long as he can make money. Even if Yunfei couldn't come up with the money at that time, Owen still has a way to make Yunfei take out the money, so after seeing Yunfei insisting so much, Owen didn't say much, and a green magic circle directly appeared on his hand, revealing that there was a strong breath of life, and then Owen put the magic circle revealing the breath of life on Yunfei's muscle-strained arm, and then he didn't move. Yunfei only felt a warm breath circulating in the sore part of his arm that was so sore from practicing a sword slash, and with the warm breath circulating in the arm, the arm uploaded the soreness that comes is also decreasing at a very rapid rate. Soon, Yunfei felt that his arm, which had a muscle strain before, really didn't have any discomfort at all, as if he had never been injured by a muscle before. Thinking of this, Yunfei became excited in an instant, and directly pulled out the Taedao he was carrying with him and used a force that was 10% or 110% stronger than his own to slam the sword in his hand. Tai Dao swung out. If the progress bar about drawing the sword in the eyes has advanced a bit, it means that the idea of letting the magician who can heal magic cast healing magic on himself to speed up the recovery of the arm is completely feasible, will be greatly increased by this discovery. It may even be possible to activate gold fingers skills in a very short period of time. In this way, Yunfei will be truly invincible, although Yunfei knows that the future Zirf and the Black Dragon Acknology are very terrifying existences, but this does not affect Yunfei's admiration for Ghost Swordsman, the power of the Sword God is very terrifying. The final result is of course similar to what Yunfei had guessed in advance. After using the arm healed by the healing magic to connect with the sword drawing slash, the progress of the sword drawing slash has improved a little. In this way, use the healing magic to speed up the practice of opening skills the method is very feasible. Just thinking about Yunfei makes me feel a little excited, the time to gain experience and fly away is finally coming. Cough, cough, sir, if you want to be in a daze, you can do it after paying the payment, sir. Because your injury doesn't have anything to do with my energy consumption, so this time I will charge you 10,000 J that's enough. Owen interrupted Yunfei's reverie, and said with a smile. Owen is already ready to take Yunfei down immediately if Yunfei can't get the money out. Although an ordinary person can afford 10,000 J even if he gritted his teeth, seeing Yunfei's foolish appearance, Owen feels that it is very likely that Yunfei will not even be able to get 10,000 J, so Owen has already thought about Yunfei's work in the next few months. I have to let this idler look like a guy who is probably here to play with me and work until he repays his 10,000 J debt. 
Of course, if Yun Fei admitted his mistake with sincerity, it's not that Owen hasn't considered the possibility of letting Yun Fei go. After all, it's just treating a muscle strain, and Owen didn't spend much magic power at all. 10,000 J, isn't it? It's really not very expensive. No, 10,000 J. Of course Yun Fei didn't know what the smiling guy in front of him was thinking, so when he heard Owen say that the fee was 10,000 J, he immediately said he took out a check of 1 million J and handed it to Owen, which was the smallest denomination check in Yun Fei's possession. It is too troublesome to carry coins and other bits and pieces with him, so Yun Fei has never had the habit of carrying money, and usually carries checks with him. He has been outside for so long and killed so many monsters and robbers. Thief, Yun Fei didn't even know how much assets he had, so Yun Fei really didn't feel at all about the money he had to work for Uncle Caleb for 10 months before he could save it. Seeing the check that Yun Fei handed over, the healing magician Owen was stunned for a moment. Originally, Owen was going to detain Yun Fei directly, because no matter how he looked at it, Owen felt that Yun Fei was not like the kind of person who could casually hand out 10,000 J, so when Yun Fei handed him a million dollar check this huge contrast at the time made Owen feel like he was dreaming. Although 1 million J is really not a lot of money for a magician like Owen, after all, Owen dared to charge 10,000 J for just waving a magic just now, and 1 million J is really not a big deal for Owen. However, if it is taken from the hands of someone who looks like a beggar like Yun Fei, the contrast will be great. 1. Dot 1. Dot 1 million J. Owen looked at the 1 million check in Yun Fei's hand and said hesitantly, even the smile on his face became a little stiff. After all, just now Owen was going to directly detain Yun Fei, but fortunately Owen didn't do it, otherwise the situation would be really bad. Well, that's right, it's 1 million J, how about it? Irving Bell, would you mind finding a place to chat? I have a big deal for you. Yun Fei looked at Owen's slightly demented expression he just smiled, and then asked seriously. Since there is no problem in using healing magic to heal a muscle-strained arm, then Yun Fei decided to hire a healing magician to follow him. It is impossible for Yun Fei to make a special trip here every time a muscle is pulled. Not to mention the complexity, it will take a long time, and relatively speaking, it is not worth the candle. After that, things suddenly became simpler. The prosperity of the world is for profit. The world is full of profit. Money is not everything, but it is still very good in most cases. Yun Fei and the healing magician Owen casually found a coffee shop and had a long friendly exchange in it. Finally, our healing magician Owen was hired by our Yun Fei at a price of 20 million J per month and became Yun Fei has a healing magician with him, and once there is any damage, he must use magic to heal it. In this way, Yun Fei lived temporarily in this city. Every day, Yun Fei would do as much training as possible. Because of Owen, a healing magician, who was by his side to treat muscle strains, Yun Fei could at least do some training every day. Hundreds of times of drawing swords and chopping practice, this is because Owen's strength is not very strong, and the magic power he can use is not as much as Yun Fei imagined. But even with nearly a hundred exercises every day, it is quite fast, and the progress of the opening of the sword drawing is also progressing rapidly under the practice of Yun Fei's observation. Of course, with the passage of time, Yun Fei quickly discovered the disadvantages of frequently receiving healing magic, that is, the effect of Owen's healing magic on Yun Fei seems to decrease as the number of times increases, and Yun Fei's body is still affected by Owen's healing magic. A considerable amount of immunity has been produced, just like taking too much medicine will defeat the resistance to the medicine. The effectiveness of the medicine will gradually weaken with the increase in the number of uses, until the last bit of effect will be gone. Originally, at the beginning, under Owen's extremely powerful healing effect, Yun Fei was able to practice hundreds of sword drawing and slashing exercises every day, but it became 50 times a day in less than half a month. One month later, it changed to 30 times a day, and by the time Yun Fei fully activated the sword drawing skill two months later, Yun Fei had almost reached the point where he was completely immune to Owen's healing magic. Just like in the original book, Natsu can get rid of motion sickness and seasickness under Wendy's magic, but after Wendy casts more magic on Natsu, Natsu itself will beat a feeling similar to drug resistance, the consequences are nothing more than shorter duration and lower magic effects. This is almost the case with Yunfei now. 
Owen's healing magic has almost no effect on Yunfei, so after paying off Owen's salary of 40 million J for two months, he once again invested in experience, or experience in the refreshing feeling of drawing a knife and cutting. After exhausting all kinds of methods, Yunfei finally turned on the drawing of the knife and cutting a long time in advance with the assistance of healing magic. Of course, Yunfei must experience the feeling of drawing the knife and cutting well. Yunfei still remembers the feeling of almost killing Alfred the Thunder Dragon with two knives in Daner City, and Yunfei still feels a little bit burnt just thinking about it. Looked around, in order to experience the feeling of explosive combat power, Yunfei purposely came to an inaccessible forest. Draw your sword and chop. Pretending to be cool, Yunfei snorted coldly, and directly used the drawn knife to slash at an uninhabited mountain. The milky white sword energy surged crazily on the blade of the Taedao, and as the knife slashed down, the milky white sword was like a substance. The general sword aura just escaped from the blade of the Taedao, forming a nearly 40 meter wide sword aura and flying towards the target just now, splitting the mountain in half without any accident. Looking at the sharp and unparalleled sword energy that swept across everything, Yunfei frowned slightly, not particularly satisfied, because the width of the sword energy alone was 60 meters worse than the sword energy that Yunfei displayed in Daner City last time in this way, Yunfei was a little suspicious that when he faced the dragon again, he would not be able to cover the scene with his sword and slash. At the same time, Yunfei felt his physical condition, and it was still a bit weak, and he couldn't use the sword drawing as a regular move. Perhaps the only thing that made Yunfei feel a little bit relieved was that the ability to use the sword drawing chop, which consumes small colorless crystals in the game, does not need to consume anything, otherwise Yunfei would really have a little headache. Although the sword drawing slash I have mastered now is far from the two sword drawing slashes that I had used up my lifespan three years ago in Daner City, but overall it is quite good, at least Yunfei doesn't need to waste his lifespan only then can he use the skill of drawing a knife and chopping, which is not even a big move. After all, drawing a knife and chopping is sharp, but compared with the real big move, it is still a little bit worse, at most it is a small big move, in Yunfei's opinion, Every big move really has the ability to kill the dragon with one blow formidable power, drawing a sword is still far behind, even the most powerful level can only take two attacks to severely injure a dragon. It is indeed very useful if it is used in heads up, but if Yunfei is facing many dragons, then drawing the sword is a bit limited. Drawing the sword is a blow with power, and it is not particularly suitable for face to face, against a siege. Before Yunfei could continue to think, there was a burst of applause behind him, and at the same time, a cold voice with a hint of surprise came from behind. I didn't expect that guy who didn't have any manners and etiquette to be so powerful. It really opened my eyes, little girl. Basically, the moment Yunfei heard this voice, he knew who it was. For this person or the voice of the devil, Yunfei still had a fresh memory. It was Liang Tianyu, one of the Tartaro's nine demon gates in the future. Sila was also the first demon to make Yunfei rage. Turning around quickly, looking at the woman or demon appearing in front of his eyes, Yunfei's eyebrows furrowed deeply after seeing Sila. It can be seen that Yunfei has no interest in Sila, a beautiful demon, very much it looks like you don't have a cold. But this is also a very normal thing. As a demon, Sila has a lot of human blood on his hands. Liang Tianyu Sila, what are you doing here? Yunfei looked at Sila's face and asked impatiently, and at the same time subconsciously held his right hand on the hilt of the Taedao at his waist, his eyes revealing a look of vigilance color. Unknowingly, Yunfei has been in the world of fairy tale 400 years ago for 6 years. It has to be said that human beings are really very adaptable creatures. During these 6 years, Yunfei got used to the life without TV, mobile phone, computer and internet, and during these 6 years of life, Yunfei successfully changed from the timid homeboy to a relative tough guy, at least Yunfei won't want to kill Sila after seeing Sila like that. And Yunfei is not a fool, Sila can take the initiative to come to him at this time, then it must mean that there is indeed something important to find him, and the person who made Sila is Zirf, so Yunfei still wait a little bit, see what Sila has to do with herself. If there is nothing important, even if Sila can be revived to the base camp, Yunfei will personally send Sila for a ride. After all, sending Sila to their own base camp is much better than Sila wandering outside. 
If you encounter any human city, then it will be terrible. Hee hee, it seems that we haven't seen each other in the past few years. The frizzy little devil has matured a lot. I thought I would be attacked by you as soon as I appeared in front of you. Sila looked at Yunfei this vigilant look just chuckled twice, just said with a smile. Okay, what did Zirf ask you to do with me, don't talk about such nonsense. Yunfei looked at Sila who seemed not in a hurry at all, raised his brows, with a positive expression on his face, and asked a little seriously. Looking at Sila's extremely leisurely look, Yunfei knew that it was definitely not Sila himself who was looking for something to do with him, but Zirf who made Sila was looking for something to do with him. Forget it, my lord Zirf wants me to take you to meet him. By the way, my lord has already studied the Eclipse Gate. Seeing that Yunfei really didn't want the ink to go down, Sila's expression suddenly became serious, that is to say in an extremely respectful and extremely cold tone. It can be seen that Sila seems to have an instinctive respect for Zirf who created himself. Yunfei stared at Sila who looked like a different person suddenly, then shrugged helplessly, and followed Sila to the direction of Zirf. There was no one talking along the way, and the atmosphere seemed a bit depressing. However, Yunfei and Sila had nothing to talk about. Although Sila seemed to be a very rare beauty, there are many beauties in the world. The beauty really doesn't have a cold, and she doesn't want to have anything to do with it. The embarrassing atmosphere didn't last long. Yunfei and Sila were physically strong and the other was not human at all. They soon arrived at the place where Zirf lived, in an unusually magnificent castle. Okay, my lord Zirf is waiting for you inside, you go in. After Sila brought Yunfei to the gate of the castle, he glanced at Yunfei lightly, and then said coldly. After finishing speaking, without waiting for Yunfei to say anything, he just turned around and left, as if he didn't intend to care about the matter between Yunfei and Zirf. Although it is indeed a bit weird for a magnificent castle to appear in a forest without any human habitation, but considering Zeref's enchanting level, Yunfei feels that things have become normal, even the R system and the Eclipse Gate can be researched the evildoer, what else can't be done by oneself. Thinking of this, Yunfei didn't have any hesitation, and directly pushed open the gate of the castle and walked in. It's just that as soon as Yunfei walked in, he was attracted by a huge thing. The door frame was a mixture of dark gold and silver, and the upper part was like a silver clock and the lower part was like a throne of dark gold and dark purple. The general door is placed in the center of the castle hall. This is, the eclipse gate that can travel through time. This, this is, this is, the eclipse gate. Yunfei looked at the building in front of him with a look of surprise and said, almost from the moment he crossed it, Yunfei started talking about the solar eclipse the gate of the eclipse, but this is the first time Yunfei has seen the real gate of the eclipse. At the same time, there was a sound of footsteps changing from light to heavy in the empty castle. Zirf slowly appeared in front of Yunfei, still the same, wearing black clothes and wearing a long white cloth, gray there was no gleam in the eyes, as if Zirf was always in a daze. That's right, this is the eclipse gate that can travel through time, brother Yunfei. Zirf looked at Yunfei and explained with a smile. If Zirf has any friends now, Yunfei is probably the only friend left. Up. So every time in front of Yunfei, Zirf can't help showing such a slight smile. After hearing Zarif's explanation, Yunfei didn't pay attention to the eclipse gate that he had been talking about for several years. Looking at Zarif's smile, Yunfei's expression flashed a trace of complexity. Maybe Zirf is in great pain now, but as a time traveler and a time traveler who likes to watch fairy tale, Yunfei knows that for Zirf, all this is just the beginning. Zirf has gained eternal life, endless time and even almost invincible power, but it needs to pay a price far beyond what others imagined. In fact, it can be seen from Zarif's continuous death seeking. Infinite time has almost invincible power but Zirf wants to die. From here we can see how much Zirf has paid. Zirf, are you ready to revive Natsu? Are all the preparations ready? Yunfei hesitated for a while, but didn't say anything, and asked directly by changing the subject. Now that Zirf has even researched the Eclipse Gate and made it, it can be seen from the fact that Zirf puts his brother Natsu first no matter what, Zirf must have revived Natsu only when all the things are settled can we research and create the Gate of Time and Space. After hearing Yunfei's words, Zarif's reluctant smile quickly subsided. The death of Natsu was a pain in Zarif's heart. 
Even if he could use the power of the R system to revive his dead brother Natsu, but Zirf still couldn't hide the sadness in his heart. No matter what, what Zirf has and what he has lost in front of him is not what he wants. Because even if Natsu is resurrected by the R system, and the personality and soul are the original Natsu, there is nothing wrong with it, but Natsu is still no longer the original Natsu, because even if Natsu is successfully resurrected by Zirf with the R system, originally, Natsu's memory will also be reset to a real baby, or a baby-like heart. After all, even if Natsu is resurrected and has the pure heart of a baby, this does not mean that Natsu's body will be a baby after resurrection. Natsu's body will still be the original body at that time, but he has lost everything. Let's start from scratch like a baby. You must know that there is almost uniqueness in cultivating a person, and it is never possible to have two people who are exactly the same, even Natsu himself is the same, and different living environments will have different Natsu. In any case, even if Zirf revives Natsu, he will not be able to see the former Natsu. Well, everything has been prepared, now I just need to find a way to give Natsu a power that surpasses everything, at least surpasses me and kills me. Presumably in this way, Natsu will be able to live happily in this world forever, Yunfei, I know you will take care of Natsu, right? Zirf looked at Yunfei and begged slightly. At present, it seems that Yunfei is the only one who can take care of the resurrected Natsu. Zirf has the curse of Anxal Ramal God's death hunting on him. It is really not suitable to be worn by Natsu's side. As for those created by Zirf if you are a demon, then you don't have to worry about it. In addition, the relationship between Natsu and Yunfei is very good, so Zirf is going to let Yunfei take care of the resurrected Natsu, and there is no hesitation at all. I. Yunfei froze for a moment, then pointed at himself in disbelief and asked Zirf. In fact, there was still one thing Yunfei didn't ask, that is, in the original book, should Natsu be thrown to fire dragon King Ignir? What? Why do you have to leave it to yourself now? Yunfei doesn't want to be Natsu's godfather or godfather or something. That's right, I really can't find anyone except you, Yunfei, please. Seeing Yunfei's unbelievable expression, Zirf said seriously, and from Zeref's point of view, entrusted Natsu it is a perfect thing to give Yunfei, who is known as the strongest human being. Zirf is more or less aware of Yunfei's reputation, and as early as three years ago in Daner City, Yunfei had a record of severely injuring the Thunder Dragon Alfred twice in the air, becoming the first one in the history of human magic to severely injure a dragon. Human beings, not only human beings but also so strong, were really very suitable. But, dot but, Yunfei hesitated a little and wanted to decline, but Zirf had even researched the Eclipse Gate for himself, so it was really inconvenient to refuse. Okay, that's it. Yunfei, you can stay here. I can control the death hunt to a certain extent. As long as you don't get too close to me, there will be no danger. Zirf quickly interrupted Yunfei. He said with a smile, and walked away without waiting for Yunfei to come over after speaking as if he was really afraid that Yunfei would reject his request. Seeing Zirf leaving in a hurry, Yunfei just shook his head a little helplessly, let's talk about the future, it should not be time to revive Natsu. Thinking of this, Yunfei hurriedly followed in the direction Zirf left after all, Zirf is probably the only person in the entire castle besides Yunfei himself. Following Zirf, Yunfei soon came to a place like a laboratory. The laboratory was full of strange things that Yunfei couldn't understand, but Yunfei knew the things placed in the center of the laboratory. That is the body of Natsu, who has long been dead, perfectly preserved by Zirf, and has reached the point where he can be resurrected anytime, anywhere. Zirf, this is Natsu's body, are you going to resurrect Natsu? Yunfei looked at Natsu who seemed to be asleep, and asked with a little sigh. Years have passed, and Natsu is still the same as the one who met Yunfei for the first time. It looks normal, nothing has changed. That's right, for this day, I have been keeping my brother Natsu's body well. Originally, I didn't plan to do it so soon, but since you have come, Yunfei, then it doesn't matter. Zirf smiled when he heard what Yunfei said. Originally, Zirf planned to prepare more fully before resurrecting his younger brother Natsu through the R system. But if we really want to talk about preparations, there is actually nothing to prepare, Zirf has already prepared all the things that should be prepared early. In addition to resurrecting my younger brother Natsu, 
I also know that my hands have already unknowingly caused uncountable blood, so my younger brother Natsu has enough power to kill me and is also the strongest demon I created, and, Aetherius Natsu Dragneel. However, it's a bit too much to call it creation. After all, Natsu originally had a human body, so it's better to say that I realized the creation of the strongest demon and the resurrection of my younger brother Natsu. Zirf explained to Yunfei with a smile after speaking, without waiting for Yunfei to say anything, he just made some movements that Yunfei didn't quite understand. Then Yunfei was surprised to find that Natsu, who had closed his eyes tightly as if he was asleep, slowly opened his eyes. Although Natsu opened his eyes a little bit dazed, but this cannot be denied the fact that Natsu, who had long been dead, was finally resurrected under Zeref's efforts. And Natsu also possesses powerful power under Zeref's creation. Natsu, as Zeref's younger brother, is also the most powerful one among all the demons created by Zeref, and possessing the ultimate powerful fire spell, if you want to evaluate it with the level of strength in this era 400 years ago, the newborn Natsu Dragneel has the power to kill dragons, but there is one thing that is a pity, that is, Natsu does not there is no memory like a baby. If it weren't for Natsu's instinct to go to the toilet and wipe his ass, Yunfei would be really annoyed to death. Originally, Yunfei thought it would be a while before Zirf revived Natsu. The younger brother Natsu was revived. The troublesome thing is that after Zirf revived Natsu, he threw Natsu, who was still in a state of confusion, to Yunfei, and he didn't know where he went. It really made people angry and credible. To be honest, if it was just like this, Yunfei would not be unacceptable, but after taking care of Natsu for a period of time, Yunfei suddenly found himself as if. Can't beat Natsu, the brat. You must know that children always cry and fight when they cry, and they are extremely moody. If there is something about Yunfei that makes Natsu unhappy, then Yunfei will have a big fight with Natsu, and the final result will be all it was Yunfei who was beaten away by Natsu's fire spell, which really made Yunfei lose all face. Of course, although Yunfei and Natsu fight all day long, the relationship between Yunfei and Natsu does not get worse because of the fight all day long. On the contrary, the relationship between Yunfei and Natsu becomes better as the number of fights increases. Ha 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 ha, Yunfei, you are still far behind. Since you lost again today, Yunfei, then hurry up and honestly be my little brother for a day. Ha 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 ha. Natsu looked at being angry by himself Yunfei, who was knocked out by the spell of the spell, just said carelessly, and the expression on which he was fighting seriously just now became extremely frightening. Hiss. It hurts, Natsu, you fool. Forget it, all again today, my little brother, my sword drawing is too weak, but Natsu, you fool, wait for me. Phantom sword dance I will hang you when I come out. Yunfei touched his head and stood up from the ground, looking at Natsu with a frightened face, he said unhappily. I don't know when it started, Yunfei and Natsu basically fight several times a day. If Yunfei doesn't want to fight, Natsu will find various reasons to fight, so the scene just now is basically in the big castle of Zirf every day. One side is staged. And every fight will be a bit of a prize, and the person who loses in a fight every day must be the younger brother of the winner and work hard within a reasonable range, but it is a pity that Yunfei never beat Natsu once. At this time, it has been more than a year since Natsu's resurrection, and Zirf also disappeared for nearly a year shortly after Natsu's resurrection, and it still disappeared without saying hello. At that time, Zirf specifically told Yunfei not to let Natsu run out casually, so Yunfei lived with Natsu in the castle for a year except when necessary, and had intense battle training every day. Compared with Yunfei's training alone, Yunfei's progress in unlocking skills is much faster during fierce battles. In just one year, Yunfei has reached the point where he is about to activate Phantom Sword Dance. You know, Yunfei has no experience in using healing magic or anything to brush, and he did it step by step step by step. Phantom Sword Dance it looks so powerful, Yunfei, I found that although you are not very powerful, the names of the moves are very handsome. Natsu said with a smile after hearing Yunfei's words, and immediately gave Yunfei a blow pounding from the heart, in a way, Natsu is really right. Facing the current Natsu, or the strongest flame demon end, Yunfei is really an existence to be beaten. Cough cough cough, as long as you are happy, you want some water, right? I'll get it for you. 
Yunfei looked at the corner of Natsu's mouth twitching, and said a little helplessly, then got up to give Natsu and himself poured a glass of water. It is estimated that there are not many people who can say such things in front of Yunfei, except for Natsu, a pervert who has reached the full level since birth. You must know that Yunfei's sword slash has long since changed from the 40 meter wide sword aura at the beginning to the current one. Even the dragon clan Yunfei is confident that he can kill one of them without using up his lifespan due to the 70 meter wide sword energy. After all, the most outstanding sword energy is not its destructive power but its unparalleled sharp armor piercing ability. Extremely strong individual skills allow Yunfei to be invincible in one on one situations. When he is at his best, Yunfei doesn't need to draw a sword to slash, but just keeps using skills such as upward pick and silver light drop. It took Natsu more than an hour, but the end result was that Yunfei collapsed on the ground and was repaired by Natsu. I have to say that Zirf has really prepared a lot for Natsu. The powerful fire spell and incomprehensible body are so helpless, at least for Yunfei who doesn't even have a real big move at the moment for those who have not mastered it, it is indeed an insoluble and invincible existence. Haha, ha, thank you, but having said that, Yunfei, why do you think my brother doesn't want me to leave this castle? I've been here for a year, and I really want to go out and have a look. Natsu ended up taking a sip of the water glass that Yunfei handed over after working on it, he said to Yunfei a little depressed and yearning. Because Zirf asked Yunfei to be optimistic about Natsu not to let Natsu run around before Zirf suddenly disappeared, so Yunfei didn't let Natsu run around in this year. Don't think that Natsu can beat Yunfei in various ways, but for Yunfei Natsu it is still quite respectful. So Natsu did not run around this year, at most he was a little curious about how wonderful the outside world is. You say Zirf, Zirf, I don't know what he is thinking, but since Zirf has already said that he wants Natsu to stop running around, then there must be a reason for him, so before Zirf comes back Natsu, you'd better stay in the castle honestly. After hearing Natsu's tone full of yearning, Yunfei just gently brushed Natsu away, and then said indifferently, with a trace of light quietly appearing on his face. The proud color of silk. Always suffering under Natsu and being beaten up by Natsu, Yunfei thinks it must be good for him to find a sense of superiority in other aspects. Unlike Natsu, Yunfei has already explored the era of 400 years ago, so he can still sit still. Really, why can you, Yunfei, travel around the mainland, but I can't? Obviously I am so much better than you, Yunfei. Natsu looked at the vaguely smug look on Yunfei's face and said unhappily, no matter what it is said that Natsu, as the strongest demon created by Zirf, the flame demon end is definitely the kind of extremely strong existence in terms of strength alone. Since Yunfei can travel around, it doesn't make sense that Natsu can't, so Natsu feels that he has the ability to travel around the mainland and learn what Yunfei can do, because Yunfei will tell Natsu what he has experienced when he has nothing to do. Of course, if you want to think that you want to pretend to be aggressive in front of Natsu after being beaten by Natsu, it's okay. Before Yunfei could return, a flat voice suddenly sounded from behind Yunfei and Natsu. Because the world is going to be chaotic, so I don't want you to run around, Natsu. Zirf slowly emerged from behind Yunfei and Natsu, and then said to Natsu flatly. However, although Zeref's tone was a little calmer, he didn't hide the happy look in his eyes. Yunfei found that after not seeing Zirf for a year, this guy became unfathomable. For some reason, Yunfei suddenly had a feeling that the one Natsu could kill would most likely be the non-resisting Zirf. If Zirf used his own power to fight Natsu, Natsu would be beaten more than 90% of the time. Brother Zirf, where the did you go, Zirf? Seriously? Throwing Natsu this annoying guy at me is killing me. Yunfei and Natsu said in unison after hearing the voice behind them. By the way, Yunfei strongly condemned Zirf who had been running away for a year without permission, and complained about Natsu beside him. Hee hee, it seems that you and Natsu get along very well, Yunfei. Zirf couldn't help smiling when he saw that Yunfei and Natsu were good friends. But Zirf, where did you go this year? And what happened when you said just now that the world is going to be chaotic? Without denying Zerif's words, Yunfei looked at Zerif and asked a little strangely, a little it's strange where Zerif went in the year when he suddenly disappeared, and at the same time, he couldn't help but shudder in his heart. 
The world is going to be in chaos, can there be a more chaotic stall than the Dragon King Festival? Therefore, Yunfei felt that during the year he lived in seclusion here, the internal conflicts within the Dragon Clan might have reached a point where the greatest level of internal strife could erupt at any time, and humans, as the fuse of this grand internal strife, he will be drawn into this era dividing internal struggle at any time, and act as a large amount of cannon fodder in the early internal activities. Dragon King Festival, Dragon and Dragon, Dragon and Man, Man and Man's War. Natsu sat next to him without speaking, looking curiously at Zirf, the brother he had never met a few times, the one who had endured everything in order to revive him. Although Natsu spends very little time with Zirf, and even has no memory of before the resurrection, but Zirf has paid so much for himself, Natsu still feels that Zirf is very close to him. There's no way around this. The Eclipse Gate can't be used just after it's made. It's still needed. Zirf seemed to be in a good mood, and directly handed Yunfei a box in his hand, which contained 12 keys, 12 golden keys, the keys to the celestial spirit contracted with the Golden Zodiac Palace. Golden Zodiac. I see, Zirf, you spent a year searching for the contract keys of the 12 Golden Zodiac Celestial Spirit. After seeing the 12 Golden Keys handed over by Zirf, Yunfei nodded suddenly. If he wants to open the gate of the solar eclipse and travel through time, the one thing he must have is the key of the Golden Zodiac. The key of the palace summons the Celestial Spirit of the Zodiac and with the power of the Celestial Spirit, it is possible to travel through time. That's right. With these 12 keys, you can open the gate of the eclipse and travel through time, but, Yunfei, there is a very regrettable thing I need to tell you. The gate of the eclipse can only travel through the gate of the eclipse if you want to go back to the era of the gate, Yunfei, I think it will be impossible. Zirf looked at Yunfei and explained with a little hesitation. Zirf knew very early on that Yunfei was very interested in the eclipse gate, so Zirf always thought that Yunfei was similar to himself because he had some unbearable past and wanted to go back and change through the Eclipse Gate. Zirf is wanting to go back to the time when Natsu was not dead and save Natsu, and casually change his future cursed by the god Anxer Ramel, Zirf thinks it should be the same for Yunfei. As a former student of Mildian Academy of Magic, Zirf still knows that Yunfei or Yunfei's predecessor tried desperately to learn magic but was beaten to death. This is why Zirf thinks that Yunfei wants to pass through the Eclipse Gate the reason for going back to the past instead of going to the future, then Yunfei predecessor who is in urgent need of strength must have experienced something terrible. It's a pity that although Zeref's speculation is orderly, Zirf didn't take into account the fact that Yunfei is a time traveler, so his reasoning is completely wrong. Before, Zirf, why do you think so? I don't have the idea of going back to the past. I just want to go to the future era to see that's all. And, Zirf, you should put this thing away yourself, I don't even know how to use magic, let alone celestial spirit magic. After hearing what Zirf said, Yunfei said a little strangely, and then put back the box containing 12 golden keys. Even if you ask for these things, it's useless. Oh, that's fine. Also, the world is already in chaos. Natsu, you don't want to sneak out, you know. After all, the dragons rule this continent. If it's Yunfei, it's best not to go out if it's not necessary. Zirf was taken aback for a moment, he didn't expect that Yunfei didn't want to use the Eclipse Gate to go back to the past, but that's fine, Zirf just smiled when he thought of this, and put away the 12 golden keys that Yunfei handed back, by the way, once again told Yunfei and Natsu not to take things like running around outside. Afterwards, Zirf explained the external situation to Yunfei and Natsu. Because of the relationship with Alfred the Thunder Dragon, who was severely injured by Yunfei last time, the Dragon Clan has completely become hawks and doves, that is, they are not close to humans. The one side and the side close to humans, and the number is extremely unequal, the dragons that are not close to humans occupy a large part of the entire dragon family. Compared with dragons that are not close to humans, dragons that are close to humans are a bit different. Alfred the Thunder Dragon is the hawk among the hawks. After that, Thunder Dragon, who was already very irritable, became even more irritable. Not only the human beings are unhappy, but even the Bront Dragon Alfred, who is close to the human race, is also unhappy. Because he can't find the relationship with Yunfei, the ants who hurt him, so he fights with the fellow human beings from time to time. When you meet a strong one, 
you get a good repair, and when you meet a weak Thunder Dragon, you double repair it back. In the beginning, Thunder Dragon Alfred knew it was easy to strike, it was just a few scratches, but after he was repaired by his kindred who was stronger than himself and close to humans, Thunder Dragon Alfred inevitably became heavier. It was as if he wanted to vent all the anger he had received on his fellows who were weaker than him. The injury also started from the kind of small injury that is only a little bit lost and can be healed in a few seconds, and it gradually became more serious, bruises, small injuries, and serious injuries, step by step, like this, under the instigation of Alfred the Thunder Dragon, the Dragon Clan was completely divided into two factions, and the anger also rose little by little. After speaking, after getting the guarantee from Yunfei and Natsu, Zirf disappeared again, and he didn't know what he was doing mysteriously. Of course, at this time, Yunfei didn't have the mood to care about what Zirf was doing. Anyway, Zirf, a monster who can crush his IQ, would not understand it himself. The Dragon King Festival is finally coming. Yunfei frowned and muttered to himself. Dragon King Festival. Yunfei, what is Dragon King Festival? You keep saying things that I don't understand. Natsu, who was standing beside Yunfei, asked in a vague way, as if he was very powerful. Maybe it's because of Natsu's strength. Sometimes Yunfei can subconsciously talk to himself and be heard by Natsu, even if the distance between Yunfei and Natsu is very far. If you don't understand, don't listen, really. After hearing Natsu's words, Yunfei glared at Natsu and said impatiently. Sometimes Yunfei really thinks that Natsu is a bit noisy, and this guy has sharp ears. Sharp. After finishing speaking, Yunfei went to his room, leaving behind Natsu with a puzzled face. Whether it was Yunfei or Zarif's words just now, Natsu was surprised to find that he didn't understand the meaning at all. Natsu knew every word meaning, but it's completely incomprehensible when put together. Afterwards, things suddenly became easier. Although there was turmoil outside and the conflicts within the dragon clan were escalating at a rapid speed, Yunfei didn't have any ideas to express, and kept fighting with Natsu every day. Practice skills and try to turn on phantom sword dance as soon as possible. Life has not become any different because of the great changes in the outside world, nor has it become any different because of Zarif's return. But there is one thing that Yunfei thinks is a bit strange, that is Zirf, the guy who stayed with Natsu all day before Natsu's resurrection, became a little indifferent after Natsu's resurrection, really can't see it at all Zirf is actually the kind of person who can give everything for his brother Natsu. So Yunfei commented on Zirf by the way, he is really a boring guy. In the end, Yunfei of course did what he had to do, and it was really urgent to activate his skills. By the way, here I have to talk about the opening conditions of the real big move Phantom Sword Dance, that is, Yunfei needs to reach 105% of the power to swing 10 times in 3 seconds. 8 times, although at first glance it seems that the requirements have become lower, from 110% of the power to open the sword to 105%. But I said it a long time ago, let alone 105%. Even 100.1% is beyond the limit to exert attack power on the premise of depleting the body, and still needs the power that exceeded the limit just 3 seconds ago swung 18 times in a row. Even if Yunfei was used to exerting 10% more power than his own before, it was a bit overwhelming. At first, Yunfei could barely manage to swing 7 times in 3 seconds. The reason why I am used to the feeling of surpassing the limit when cutting with a knife. Now, after a whole year of fighting and practicing with Natsu, Yunfei can swing 17 times in a row within 3 seconds. It is not far from the day when the first real big move, Phantom Sword Dance. Speaking of this, I have to talk about the sequelae after each practice of Yunfei. Although it is only 5% of the strength beyond the limit, Yunfei swings many times in a very short time every time, so this is also a problem. This caused Yunfei to suffer severe muscle strains every time. Basically, Yunfei would go to human cities every once in a while to buy some medicinal materials and medicines that are good for muscle recovery. As for healing magic, basically it has no effect on Yunfei. The skill of drawing swords and slashing, which can only be activated in more than a year or even two or three years, has been shortened to the point where it can be activated in more than a month. After receiving too many healing magics in a short period of time, Yunfei is now very resistant to this type of magic. Basically, 
Lower grade healing magic will not have any effect on Yunfei, but higher grade healing magic healing magic Yunfei didn't know where to find it. If you really want to say, Yunfei did know a high grade healing magic. That is the heavenly dragon granting who taught Wendy Marvel the magic of dragon slaying, not only possesses powerful destructive power but also is quite outstanding in healing. If Yunfei can get the help of Heavenly Dragon Granting, it is absolutely possible activate several skills consecutively within a certain period of time. It's a pity that Yunfei knows about him but he doesn't know Yunfei, and even if he is a dragon who is close to humans and is willing to help, but Yunfei doesn't know where to find him. Previously, Yunfei has practiced on the Ishgar continent for so many years and has not encountered it a few times. Dragon, from this we can see how difficult it is to find a specific dragon. There is no way, Yunfei can only use some other auxiliary methods, such as using herbs and magic potions to strengthen the healing ability of Yunfei's own muscles. Although it is far behind the healing magic, it can improve Yunfei several times. Workout speed is still out of the question. This is why Yunfei needs to go to human cities to buy medicinal materials and potions every now and then. Even if the journey takes a little time, the overall efficiency has been improved several times, which is quite good. The last thing that needs to be said is that the civil war of the dragon clan finally broke out. After the two factions of the dragon clan, who had been trying their best to endure, reached the peak of their anger, they finally launched an unprecedented large-scale fighting. No, it was a large-scale battle. As soon as the battle started, the dove dragons who were close to humans fell into an absolute disadvantage. The number and strength of the dove dragons were far less than those of the eagle dragons. There was no comparison at all. Under such circumstances, the result has already doomed the failure of the Dove Dragon Clan. Therefore, at the beginning of the battle, the Eagle Dragons who are not close to humans suppressed the Dove Dragons who were close to humans. This is because a considerable part of the Eagle Dragons did not find their opponents an idle down participate in the relationship of the siege. After all, everyone is a Dragon Clan, and fighting belongs to everyone, but it doesn't have to be to the point where you have to divide the life and death, so the scale of the dragon civil war seemed to be quite large when it first started, but everything is still there. Within the scope of restraint, the most is that the dragon who is close to humans is beaten by a dragon that is not close to humans, and his nose is bruised and his face is swollen. It's just that in this way, many dragons who are not close to humans have no opponents. It's too boring to just watch their own clans fight. If they don't have some fun, they will probably fall asleep. Is there anything more interesting than humans at this time? Of course not. Moreover, humans, as the fuse that triggered the dragon civil war, are very eye-catching in themselves, so this has led to basically all dragons that are empty and have no opponents to go to humans for fun, enjoying the panic and struggle of ants. With force, it's simply not too interesting. All of a sudden, Gunpowder was everywhere, and many cities on the Ishgar continent were attacked or played by the dragons. A large number of magicians died in the process of resisting the dragons, and there were still a lot of magic materials and documents in this large-scale war. Lost during the dragon attack. It can be said that just this play from the dragon clan has caused the level of human magic to fall back by more than one level. Many magics that are powerful enough to cause trouble to the dragon clan to a certain extent have been lost due to the fall of the master, and have become lost. Every lost magic represents power and weirdness 400 years later. Because the targets and enemies of all lost magic are dragons, it is not at the same level as those magics that target humans themselves 400 years later. Compared with the lost and lost magic in the Dragon King festival, the disadvantages outweigh the benefits. Just when the dragon civil war broke out, Zirf took Natsu and disappeared without even saying hello to Yunfei. He clearly told Natsu not to run around, but he himself took Natsu to play and disappeared. Yunfei really it's a bit helpless. However, Zirf and Natsu have nothing to worry about. One or two of them are all existences that can hang Yunfei in a fancy way. In this world, Yunfei really doesn't know who can kill Zirf. If something happened to both Zirf and Natsu, Yunfei would probably be useless even if he was there. Of course, this is based on the premise that Yunfei does not use the master contract, if he uses the master contract regardless of the consequences, then it will be different. Although the castle suddenly became empty, but Yunfei still needs to live, so even if Zirf and Natsu suddenly disappeared inexplicably, 
Yunfei still lives alone in the castle. Anyway, Yunfei is on the continent of Ishgar during the practice. I basically lived alone and I didn't feel uncomfortable, but I suddenly felt that there was no noisy guy like Natsu around, and I was a little disappointed and nostalgic. Such days continued until Zirf came back with a book with the word end in his hand and brought a very beautiful girl. Natsu did not come back with Zirf. Zirf had an extra book about the strongest flame the demon technique of the demon end, if Yunfei didn't know what was going on, he would be really blind. Zirf, why did you come back alone? Why didn't Natsu come back with you, or this in your hand? What is it? And she is. Yunfei looked at Zirf who came back and the girl next to Zirf. Asking slightly hesitantly, the moment Yunfei saw this girl, a name, Lucy Hephidlia, flashed in Yunfei's mind. As a witness of Natsu's resurrection, Yunfei knows that although Natsu is the strongest demon of flame created by Zirf, Natsu is different from other demons created by Zirf. Natsu does not have demons like Tartaros. The Book of Demons, the Book of Demons is the real body of demons. But Natsu has his own body, so Natsu does not have a Book of Demons. Zirf did not intend to create a Book of Demons for Natsu at the beginning, but now that Natsu is gone, Zirf actually holds a Book of Demons with the word end printed on it. After returning, Yunfei knew that Zirf and Natsu must have been adopted by the fire dragon Ignir, and their original memory and power had been sealed in the Book of Demons. Even though Yunfei knew that all of this was probably Zerif's arrangement and plan, Yunfei still couldn't help but wonder, why did Zirf do this? I met my friend Fire Dragon King Ignir, so I asked Ignir to help me take care of Natsu, and her name is Anna Hephidlia, I gave the contract key of the Celestial Spirit of the Golden Zodiac to if you want to use the Eclipse Gate, Yunfei, let Anna help you, and Anna will live here in the future. Seeing Yunfei, Zirf smiled reluctantly, and then explained to Yunfei a little bit. After the explanation, before Yunfei could continue to ask, a dark purple magic circle floated under Zerif's feet and disappeared slowly. Only Yunfei and Anna were left staring at each other here. Ahem, ah, uh, hello Miss Anna, it's the first time we meet, my name is Yunfei Alsace, please take care of me in the future. Yunfei looked at the face that resembled Lucy and smiled dryly, but said a little embarrassedly. Mr. Yunfei, don't be so nervous. Although Zirf has already been introduced just now, I'd better introduce myself again. My name is Anna Haeflia. Please take care of me, Mr. Yunfei. If Yunfei sir, if you want to use the Eclipse Gate, you can come to me at any time. Seeing Yunfei's slightly nervous look, Anna chuckled twice, and then said with a smile. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and support my channel.